When I was in secondary school, I knew that I wanted to be a biologist, but not the kind of biologist that I am today. I was probably given my first microscope when I was about seven. So it involved looking at very tiny little things. I always wanted to work with animals and something related to health, and I actually had my own hospital at home with all my, my toys. If you ask any guy in India, so he will say he wanted to be a cricketer. It was the same for me. Yes, I have. It was really bad. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. No. I wouldn't recommend it for anybody. And it was also really good for my work because now I understand when I see uh, study participants, I usually can empathize with them. I don't know. I treated myself for malaria once, but I couldn't get diagnosed because I was in a remote area. No, I never had malaria because I'm, most of the time when I travel, I'm on prophylactis. Although I have to say that I often wondered what it feels like to have malaria. It's not a pleasant thing to experience and one can only imagine what it's like in areas where you can't get treatment or fluids um, or where you don't know really what you have. The person who inspired me to be specialized in malaria was my sister because whenever we used to play around, so she was the one who always used to get malaria and I was the one who was not getting malaria. So that made me think why that this discrimination by malaria parasite. I think Pedro Alonso was probably the one who, who inspired me the most. He started as a researcher and then finalized now as a policy maker and a decision maker. I think it's not really a person or a situation, it's a thing. I think I then I have to say mosquitoes. I think that is going to come soon. I would say it was the discovery of AP2G, where we understood the mechanism of how parasites decide to stop multiplying in the same host and move to a different host. Probably the most aha moment was when we saw the 86% drop in malaria prevalence after we deployed the two mass drug administrations. Um, and we actually saw that, wow, maybe this works. Oh, I can think of lots of mistakes. The biggest mistake was uh, not going for what I wanted uh, when I finished my studies because I, I, I work on the private sector for two years, but I learned a lot of things as well. We all have a lot of mistakes, but they are, I think that they are good things, they are opportunities. It's not a real mistake, it's part of the discovery project, trying things and learning from things that do not work. Whether you call them mistakes or learning opportunities, uh, I would really say that if you're not making mistakes, you're not, make, you're not taking enough risks. I hope that malaria prevalence really goes down worldwide, and I really hope that uh, RTSS vaccine or other vaccine would, uh, would help to, to sustain that decrease. It will have to be a 100% efficient vaccine that is cheap and easy to produce, but uh, this would clearly pave the way for elimination. I really would like to see elimination in Mozambique, since I'm living there. Malaria elimination in Maputo province. I think ivermectin is probably one of the most interesting things that has happened in, um, in the past few years. Maybe from the technology point of view, we have CRISPR-Cas9 technology that will definitely have a major impact uh, on our understanding of parasite biology and eventually in the long term it may have an impact on malaria elimination as well. Never stop the control. Don't cut the funding on basic research. Do not neglect basic research. The lesson from polio and the lesson from smallpox is don't give up your research base. Know that you will face problems, and particularly in malaria, that there's not a single silver bullet. We have to put, tie the various uh, solutions that we have into a rational strategy, and we have to be very judicious in how we use them. Collaboration and interdisciplinarity. Innovative and evidence-based. Community-based. I will describe us together. Promising. Global health is both challenging, um, but it is so promising and I remain an optimist. Fantastico.